Hello, everybody. Welcome and thank you for attending the Valley Green Energy Information Session this this evening. We are here with um, Marlena Patton and Paul Gromer from Mass Power Choice, who is our consultant for this effort. I wanted to let you know that this meeting is being recorded and you can access the recording at the Town of Amherst YouTube, YouTube channel website. We will also make the recording available to both the city of Northampton and the town of Pelham as well. I'm Stephanie Ciccarello and I am the director of sustainability for the town of Amherst. I'm very pleased to be here with you this evening. This has been a long, hard effort and we're really excited that we're finally at this point where we're gonna be launching very soon. Um, I wanna thank our executives from our three communities, town of Amherst, town manager, Paul Bockelman and Gina Louise Shera of City of Northampton and Baba Goglia from the town of Pelham, who is the chair of the select board. Um, this evening, we also want to thank our my counterparts for the City of Northampton. It's Dr. Ben Weil, who's the director of climate action and project administration, and Tom Thompson, who just out of the goodness of his heart has led for Pelham. For the town of Pelham. He's volunteered his time and acted as a liaison with um, Baba Goglia and the Energy Committee for Pelham. So he's been keeping the effort going um, for the town of Pelham. And so we thank him for all his work. Um, tonight's uh, format, we are going to have a presentation and we are going to ask you to type your questions at the bottom of your screen. There is a Q&A. You can type your questions. They will not be viewed by the attendees. Um, but we will read them out for our presenters after their presentation, and then they will be able to answer your questions that way. Um, I think we will continue as long as we have questions. If it gets to be too much over time, then we'll probably stop. Um, you can always have your questions answered uh, through the support at valleygreenenergy.org and also the telephone number that I'm sure Marlena will be providing to you. Um, let's see if I missed anything else. I uh, want to thank Paul and Marlena just for being the consultants on this effort. They've been amazing. They have vast experience in the Commonwealth, um, assisting communities with their aggregations. Uh, we are so fortunate to have chosen them as our consultants. They helped us with every step of the way. And, um, and now with launching, they are going to be the support, um, customer service support for, for this effort. So with that, I will turn it over to Marlena. Great, thanks, Stephanie. Um, hi, everybody. I can't see you, um, but I know you're out there. Um, so as Stephanie said, Paul and I are from Mass Power Choice, and we are the extra set of hands that is here to help help these three communities um, manage these programs, manage this program now that it's it's going to be up and running very soon. So I'm going to take you through some slides, and hopefully these slides will help the program make a little bit more sense and hopefully answer a lot of your questions. Um, but then we'll obviously have a Q&A at the end as well. So I'm going to share my screen. Alrighty, so hopefully everybody can see my screen now. Um, so I always start here with the cover slide. An introduction of Valley Green Energy, that seems obvious. Um, but at the bottom, it says an electricity program from and for the communities of Amherst, Northampton, and Pelham. That's important just because I want to emphasize that this is a municipally based program. This is not a private program. It's not my company's program. It's not something where a private company came to the municipalities and said, hey, do you like our program? Do you want to endorse it? This program is inherently municipally based. It had to go through a regulatory review process with the state. And it is only for residents and businesses in these three communities. So if somebody lives in a neighboring town, it's not one of these three, they can't participate in it. So this is very, very special for Amherst, Northampton, and Pelham. So uh, first question is, what kind of program is it? It's a municipal electricity aggregation, which is a mouthful. And if that leaves you confused like the dog on this slide, the way to think about it is it's a form of group electricity purchasing. 
It's also a municipal alternative to all of the electricity marketing that we all get in the mail and over the phone and sometimes at our door. Big picture, what's in it for you? Why should you participate? There are some key benefits for electricity customers. A big one is cleaner electricity for a price that is lower than Eversource or National Grid. So just to pause here for a minute, when I'm talking about prices, we're talking about a specific part of your bill, which is the supply part of your bill. That's the part of the bill where you pay for the electricity itself. It's different from the delivery part of the bill. So you're gonna get a price through this program for that supply part of your bill. And for that price, which is lower than the price that you get for Eversource or National Grid, more of your electricity is going to come from clean renewable sources than it does if Eversource or National Grid is, is buying it. With that, I have to offer the caveat that we can't guarantee the savings are always going to be there, that you're always going to have a price that's lower than Eversource or National Grid. And the reason for that is because when you have Eversource or National Grid's price for the supply part of your bill, it changes every six months or even more frequently if you're a very large business customer. So their price is always changing when you have their price for that part of your bill. And we don't know what their future prices are going to be. Uh, so we can't always guarantee that the Valley Green Energy price is going to be below their prices. But right now, for sure, you're going to save a little bit by participating in this program. Another big benefit is three new choices for the supply part of your bill. I'll go into that in a little more uh, detail in just a few slides. And then the third big benefit is stable and consistent pricing for the supply part of your bill. So I mentioned a minute ago that Eversource and National Grid's price for that part of your bill changes every six months. With Valley Green Energy's prices, the price is consistent for two years. So the program will launch in November and the prices will be fixed through November of 2026. So they will not be changing seasonally uh, every six months. So one thing I like to clarify early in the presentation is that Valley Green Energy is not a replacement for Eversource or National Grid as your electric utility. And in fact, you don't have a choice in who your electric utility is in Massachusetts. It's determined by where you live. They own the poles and the wires, and their primary job is to deliver your electricity. So if you live in Amherst or Pelham, Eversource is your electric, you, you, excuse me, your electric utility. And if you live in Northampton, it's National Grid, and you can't change that. What you can change, though, is your electricity supplier. Your electricity supplier is the company that puts electricity on the grid for you. And that's distinct from your electric utility, or it can be distinct. So to understand this a little bit better, it can help to know that there are actually three ways, three options for your electricity supplier to choose your electricity supplier in Massachusetts. The first is if Eversource or National Grid is the company that's buying your electricity in addition to delivering it. So that means they're providing you with two services. When National Grid or Eversource is buying it for you, they are acting as your electricity supplier, and that's called basic service. And when you have basic service through them, you have their price for the supply part of your bill. That basic service price is the one that changes every six months or less that I mentioned a minute ago. So when you have Eversources or National Grid's basic service, the price you have for the supply part of your bill changes all the time. Your second option is you sign a private contract with one of these companies that's marketing to us all the time. So when you do that, your utility remains the same, Eversource or National Grid, just as it is now. They're still delivering your electricity. They're still sending your bill. But when they calculate the supply part of your bill, they're using the price you got from that electricity supply company. And then the third option is if your city or town signs a contract with one of those electricity supply companies instead of you, but you get to benefit from that contract. So in that case, Eversource or National Grid is still your electric utility as they are now. They're still sending your bill, delivering your electricity, 
But when they calculate the supply charge on your bill, they're going to use the price that your city or town got with that contract. So that's what aggregation is, municipal electricity aggregation is, and that's what Valley Green Energy is. This slide is a picture of what I was just talking about. Specifically, this is a picture of basic service. So this is when your utility, Eversource or National Grid is providing you with two services. They're both supplying and delivering your electricity. This is what we all have when we first open our electricity accounts. It's kind of the default. It's, it's always there for us. We can always go back to it. It's just what we are put on automatically, basic service. So this is a picture of that. One entity providing you with two services and then the customer is there on the right. This slide is what it looks like with Valley Green Energy in place. So the right two thirds of this diagram are exactly the same as they were on the previous slide. Your utility is still delivering your electricity and you are there as the customer receiving it, and there's been no interruption in the relationship between you and Eversource or you and National Grid. So that utility is delivering the electricity, there's no uh, interruption in the electricity flow, there's no change in the billing, there's no new entity doing the billing, you're not paying anybody else. So that whole part of this diagram remains exactly the same. The only change is over on the left with the supply, there, we've colored it orange because there's a different entity that's buying electricity and putting it on the grid. That entity is specifically a company called First Point Power. It's an electricity supplier that Valley Green Energy has signed a contract with to guarantee prices to participants in the program. So I mentioned at the beginning that one of the big benefits of the program is that there are th new choices, three new choices. So that's what this slide is about. This slide is comparing those choices with the utilities basic service prices. So on the left, we have the three choices in Valley Green Energy. On the right, we have the current residential basic service prices for Eversource and National Grid. So if we look over on the left, at the middle option, BGE standard green. You'll see under that, it says auto enroll. What that means is that's the one you get if you don't make any other choices when you participate in the program. Valley Green Energy had to choose one that works as what's called the default. And all the programs like this in the state, and I should add that there's about 200 now in the state, all of them work this way with multiple options, you have to choose one that's the default that you get if you don't make any other choices. So that's the middle one here. With VGE standard green, the price for the supply part of your bill is 13.994 cents per kilowatt hour. This is cents, not dollars. And with that, you get an additional 10% of your electricity from renewable sources. When I say additional, what that means is on top of the amount you're already getting. So state law in Massachusetts says all electricity has to have a minimum amount from renewable sources. So National Grid and Eversource buy that minimum amount and give that to you when they're your supplier, when you have basic service. But Valley Green Energy is gonna buy another 10% on top of that. So you're gonna get cleaner electricity for a price that is lower than if you look over on the right, the residential prices for both uh, Eversource and National Grid. Those prices are both higher. Again, those prices are in cents, not dollars. Now there are two other options in the program. There's the 100% green option, which gives you all of your electricity from renewable sources. It costs a little bit more because buying renewable energy costs a little bit more, 16.474 cents a kilowatt hour. That's not a price you're gonna get automatically. You have to request it, but it's easy to ask for it. You just go on the website or call customer support and provide your account information. And then VGE Basic is over on the left. That's the cheapest option in the program, 
With that, you're getting the minimum renewable energy required by law. So it's the same electricity mix that you're getting from Eversource or National Grid, but you're getting a Valley Green Energy price for it, which as you can see is the lowest price in the program. All three of those Valley Green Energy prices will be fixed from November, 2024 through November, 2026. So it's two years and they do not change during that time. In comparison, as I said before, Eversources and National Grid's prices will change every six months or less if you have a very large, uh, very large account. So let's take a look at what you're gonna see on the bill. And one of the nice things about these programs is that they don't make a lot of changes. Um, it's not like you have a whole new world when you look at your bill. So for starters, as I said before, your bill is still going to come from your utility. So if you're a National Grid customer, for example, you're in Northampton, your bill is still going to be a National Grid bill, still going to come from National Grid. If you have automatic payment set up with National Grid, none of that changes. You're just going to see some changes on the bill itself. Under supply services, which is typically the bottom of the first page or the top of the second page, where it says supplier, you're going to see first point Valley Green Energy. You're going to see that on your bill. And then you'll see the contact information for First Point Power. And then where it says electricity supply and they do the calculation for your supply charge, you'll see a Valley Green Energy price. You'll notice these prices have the decimal in a different place. They're the same numbers we were just looking at, but the decimals to the left. And that's because this is in dollars. That's how your bill is calculated in dollars. So that's what you're going to see on a national grid bill. If you're an Eversource customer, you'll see changes in two places. This is the first page of your bill. So this is for Amherst and Pelham customers. This is the first page of your bill. The Valley Green Energy price will impact the calculation of the supply charge, which is there in yellow. And then where it says your electricity supplier is, you're going to see first point Valley Green Energy. You'll see that name is repeated here. And that's because if you're an Amherst customer, you're going to see AMH at the end of it. If you're a Pelham customer, you're going to see PLM at, after it. Um, you're not going to see both. The utility just required us to have distinct uh, first lines for each community. And we just wanted to make sure everybody could see what their, what their bill would have. So you have one of those two. Um, and then on the second page of your bill, where they have, again, the calculation for the supply charge, you're going to see a Valley Green Energy price used for that calculation. And you'll again see first point Valley Green Energy on the bill. But otherwise, as you can see, these bills will look pretty much the same. And that's because they will be. They're still coming from your utility. There's not a separate bill that's coming. And there's also no additional charge that's being added to your bill. We're just replacing a price that's already on your bill with a new price. Otherwise, except for these changes that I just mentioned, your primary relationship for electricity is gonna remain with Eversource or National Grid, the same as it is now. So they're still gonna deliver your electricity. You're gonna call them if the power goes out. They're gonna send your bill, you're gonna pay them. You're not gonna get any other bills. And importantly, if you're eligible for any discounts like a low income discount or fuel assistance, you're gonna to continue to receive those discounts with no change. Now, how does participating work? It's pretty easy because all the programs like this, and I mentioned there's about 200 now, uh, all the programs in the state work with an automatic enrollment model. That's how they all work. It's not something that Valley Green Energy chose. Specifically, what that means is anybody with Eversources or National Grid's basic service. So that means you don't have a private electricity supply contract. If you have basic service, then you would be eligible for automatic enrollment in November, and you should have received a notice in the mail bearing your city or town seal and the Valley Green Energy logo. If you received a notice in the mail and it looked kind of familiar, but you didn't see your town or city seal and the program logo, it's gonna be from a private company. And I say that because a lot of these private companies will pay attention to when communities are launching programs like this and they will step up their marketing and try to be confusing and siphon off some customers. Um, so just make sure you are being careful with what you're looking at. So 
if you're eligible for automatic enrollment, you should have received a notice, but you don't have to participate. So participation is not required and you're free to opt out before being automatically enrolled if you want to do so, or you can opt out anytime in the future with no fee or penalty. So what that means is there's no minimum participation period, and that makes this program a little different from some of those private offers that are out there. You could try it out for a month and leave if you wanted. Um, there's not going to be a penalty for leaving, and Eversource and National Grid don't charge you penalties for returning, excuse me, for returning to basic service. Now, some common questions and answers. What if you don't have basic service? What if you've signed a contract with an electricity supplier already? What then? Well, you're not going to be eligible for automatic enrollment. You have a contract, but you're free to join. You just have to take a step to do it. So you can go on valleygreenenergy.org and fill out the form there. Or if you need some help filling out the form, you can give us a call and we can fill it out for you. If you're in a contract with a really great price, and that contract doesn't end for a few months, or maybe you have an early termination fee and you really don't wanna break your contract and get hit with that fee, it's no problem at all. You can wait and finish your contract and then enroll in Valley Green Energy and you'll still get the program price. I would just recommend that you call in the last billing cycle of your contract, not before then. All right, so what if you have solar panels or you have community solar and you're getting credits on your bill or a payment, an incentive payment? Is this program going to change that? It's not. There's going to be no change at all, specifically no change to how those credits or payments are calculated. This is something we get a lot of questions about. So you can participate in Valley Green Energy and also participate in community solar and get credits or you can participate in Valley Green Energy and also have solar panels and get credits or an incentive payment. This program impacts you when you buy electricity from the grid. So for example, if you have solar panels, they're not producing at night. You're gonna be buying electricity from the grid at night and you're gonna to have to pay for it. And that bill is gonna be based on a price. If you're participating in Valley Green Energy, you would get the Valley Green Energy price for the supply part of your bill and your credits would go against that instead of a bill calculated using the basic service price. As I said before, if you have a low income discount, fuel assistance, no change. And if you have National Grid's budget plan, which is when they uh, bill you exactly the same amount every month for like a year based on your projected use, no change at all. Those are all the same. If you have Eversource's budget billing, which is basically the same as National Grid's budget plan. So again, they're projecting your use. And based on that projection, they're going to charge you exactly the same amount every month. So your bill doesn't vary. There would be a change. Budget billing would continue to apply to your delivery charge, but it would no longer apply to your supply charge. So that means your supply charge would be calculated based on the amount of electricity you use every month. So it, that part of your bill would vary a little bit every month. If it's important to you to have budget billing on your total bill and you are an Eversource customer, meaning you live in Amherst or Pelham, then you would not want to participate in Valley Green Energy. But if you're a National Grid customer in Northampton and you have their budget plan, you don't need to opt out. You will still have budget billing apply to your total bill. All right, so this is just a um, screenshot at the top half of the valleygreenenergy.org website, which I just like to show folks. Uh, so it looks familiar. If you go there, you've seen it before. If you look in the upper right corner, you'll see three buttons, enroll, change your option, or opt out. That's where the forms are. So if you need to submit an enrollment request or you want to switch from standard to basic or 100% green, you can do that there or you want to opt out. Those are the same forms that um, we use when you call us. So if you're having any trouble with them, you can just give us a call. You'll also see on here, um, there are a lot of resources. There's a calculator, for example. So if you wanted to compare Valley Green Energy prices with the most recent 12 month average price for Eversource or National Grid, you can do it there. And you can see the environmental impact of the extra renewable energy you would be buying uh, through the program. 
There's also a customer support uh, link there, which has the customer support phone number on it and a form and the customer support email address. And then, of course, the prices are on there. And it's a regulatory requirement that uh, this website always has the current basic service price for both National Grid and Eversource. So if you want to track that, you always want to see how the program price is compared to the current basic service price for either utility, you can just come here and go to that prices page and you'll be able to see it. Um, just a note about that though, remember uh, the program is giving you a long-term fixed price and those prices are bouncing around constantly. So you wanna always compare the Valley Green Energy price with the average of the utility prices. So I think that's it. Um, hopefully that answered some questions. I will stop sharing and we'll try to answer the remaining questions. Thank you so much, Marlena. That was really informative um, and really helpful. So we have several questions. I am just going to read them and then one of you two can jump in with your response. First question. I joined a community energy solar farm and I have a 25 year prepaid contract with them. What impact will shifting from National Grid to Valley Green Energy, and are there any special processes or liabilities to joining? So I think the question is, what impact will shifting from National Grid to Valley Green Energy have, and are there any special processes or liabilities in joining? So it sounds like this is a community, is it a community solar? Community energy solar farm. Yeah, so as I said, um, there's no impact at all. Um, this program impacts only the price that is used to calculate the supply part on your on your bill. That's the only impact for this program. So if you're participating in community solar, you can keep doing that. And if you're getting bill credits, there's not going to be any change in their calculation. They're still going to show up on your bill the same as always. But the underlying bill that they're going against would be a little bit lower because the Valley Green Energy price is a little bit cheaper. Uh, than the current utility prices. Okay, next question. I have solar panels on my roof, but we use more electricity than they supply. Can I participate in this program? Yep, absolutely. You can have solar panels on your roof and do this. Um, and it's it's just what I said before as, as with uh, community solar. So this program impacts you when you buy electricity from the grid. So if your solar panels are producing a lot, you might not be seeing a bill but the credits that you're getting from their production are being put against what you owe when you take electricity from the grid, like at night. Those credits are going a little, going to go a little further if that bill is a little bit lower, which it would be by participating in this program. And also, you know that when you're buying electricity, you're buying electricity that's a little bit cleaner. And from Tom, how likely is it that the next contract term will be two years or longer? What is the longest contract and typical contract of the municipalities that Mass Power Choice services? Um, our contracts typically are between one and three years. Um, whether this the next contract is longer or shorter will really depend on where the market is and what makes sense. Sometimes a shorter contract provides better value for the community. Um, sometimes a longer contract is uh, a good idea because we want to take advantage of a big dip in the market. It's really going to depend on where the market is at the time we go out to bid. But the typical range of contracts is one to three years. And what happens if a supplier changes as each contract starts? So that's not uncommon. The suppliers do come and go with programs like this. And part of our job is to help shepherd through the transition from one supplier to another. Um, the communities will put out an announcement every time there's a new contract. They're, they're required to announce prices. The announcement will include the supplier name. But as a customer, it's pretty seamless. You just get moved to the new price and your bill just shows the new supplier name. But there isn't any, there isn't anything you need to do. That's that's our job. Okay. And then this next question is, um, I think ultimately this question is pointing out that sometimes the cost of electric uh, electricity costs less than what the delivery services price are for resident residential homes. And I think what they're asking is what is the difference 
What is the different delivery price of Valley Green Energy from National Grid? So, well, Valley Green Energy doesn't impact the delivery prices at all. Um, unfortunately, we don't really have any ability to do that. The delivery part of your bill, whether you're an Eversource or a National Grid customer, is regulated. That's the part of the bill where the utilities make their profit. They actually don't make a profit on the supply charge part of the bill. And there are a lot of other regulated costs embedded in the delivery charge, like you pay into the Mass Save program there. Um, so all that's, that part of the bill is totally regulated and we just don't have any ability to impact it as, as consumers through a program like Valley Green Energy. So there's no impact. Valley Green Energy only changes the price that's used to calculate the supply charge on your bill. Uh, what is the economic benefit of keeping a community solar subscription and Valley Green Energy? Well, if, as I mentioned before, if the underlying bill that your community solar credits are going against is calculated using a Valley Green Energy price instead of an Eversource or a National Grid basic service price, and the Valley Green Energy price is a little bit lower, then those credits are gonna go a little bit further. I am a National Grid customer and I have rooftop solar panels. I routinely generate more than I consume, running a credit until March when I might pay a small amount for one month. Will switching to Valley Green for supply change the way I accrue the credit? No, Valley Green Energy has no impact on the credit calculation. The credit calculation is not connected to your personal supply price. And this looks like all Valley Green options cost more than basic. Is that correct? Uh, no, it is not correct. I can put that slide up again, but Valley Green Energy Standard and Basic are both cheaper than both the National Grid and Eversource prices. Where did you get the National Grid Basic cost 16.055 cents per kilowatt hour? For reference, what was the average National Grid basic cost over the last two years? Well, that is the current residential price for National Grid basic service. So we got it from National Grid. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know what the most recent two-year average is, but you can go on the Valley Green Energy website and look at the calculator and you'll see the most recent average, one-year average. You can get that right there. Thank you. Um, this question really is just asking about access to data for third party electricity supplies. Is that something that this program will allow us to have access to for outreach? What specific, I'm not sure what data. So, so those, um, so um, customers that are using a third party electricity supply, mm. this program allow us to have access to that data. Um, I think there is the possibility of, of getting that now. There didn't used to be, um, but it's a new a new source of information under the new DPU aggregation guidelines that programs can get information about who is uh, on private electricity supply contracts and use that for marketing. But it's a brand new rule and we haven't tested it yet. So uh, we know it's theoretically possible though. Thank you. Can National Grid increase what they charge um, an individual for delivery once Valley Green Energy is their supplier? They're on basic service now, but would opt into Valley Green 100% renewable. No. Uh, so as I mentioned before, delivery charges are regulated. So they're not tied to your supply charge. Um, further, National Grid doesn't have a motivation for doing that. They don't take a profit on the supply charge, so it's not hitting their bottom line negatively that you're participating in this program or if you have a private contract. So they are not allowed to do that. Uh, there's no motivation for them to do it. So they don't put an asterisk next to your name and say, we're also going to turn their power on last if the power goes out. They really are, and Eversource along with them, they really are 100% neutral about whether you have their basic service price or you sign a private contract or you're in a program like this. I get solar credits from my son's solar panels when they produce more energy than he uses. It sounds like I will continue to get them. Am I right? Correct. What happens to Valley Green Energy prices after 2026? 
Well, the uh, community's intention to go back out to bid and get competitive bids from the marketplace again, like this time, and sign another contract. The prices will inevitably change. I mean, I suppose it's theoretically possible they could be exactly the same, but that would surprise me. Um, so wherever the market is, will dictate what the prices are at that point. Um, as I mentioned before, the communities will announce whatever the new prices are. And if you're active in the program at that point, you would get moved to the new price for your program option. Just you would see a change on your bill in the same way that when you have basic service, you just see a change on your bill every six months. You would see it when this contract changes. Are financial comparisons available between Valley Green Energy and Nexamp's costs? Um, if Nexamp is doing a supply costs, I suppose you could. I think they're community solar, Marlena. Oh, you're they're thinking of community solar? solar. Um, so, well, they're just completely different things. Um, community solar is a completely different, unrelated animal. Uh, it's a financial relationship you get into with a solar project. You pay them, you get credits on your bill. It's completely independent of a program like Valley Green Energy, which impacts the supply price on your bill. I know this is, this comes up a lot. It seems to be a really confusing, confusing point. Even when it gets explained, I think it takes hearing it several times to really understand what that distinction really is. Um, and this is sort of a three-part question. This may be good, but I always balk at auto opt-in to anything. Why is it like that? Well, that's the state law. They all work that way. Um, so it's not something that the Valley Green Energy communities chose. And as a practical matter, it's a benefit to it working that way. If the suppliers had to wait for everybody to take a step and choose to sign up, they wouldn't have any idea who's going to participate, and they'd probably get lower numbers anyway. And without any predictability, they would have to bid a higher price. But when they have some predictability, and they know there's going to be probably a, a certain number of participants, that enables them to bid more competitively. So the auto enrollment model is what helps get the better prices for everybody. Um, but there is that opt out availability, which um, you know the, the door is always open. So it, what that means is, from a consumer perspective, the risks are low. You can participate if you want and change your mind at any time. As I said before, you could even just be in it for a billing cycle and leave. Um, so if, if you want to try it out, you know right now you're going to pay a little bit less for sure. And you could change your mind later if you decide it's not for you. And what I've been saying is we know at least for six months that our prices are going to be lower. Um, another part to that question, what about the viability of first point power? What if they go under? Paul, do you want to talk about that? I've been talking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'd be happy to. So in the, the, a few part answer to that question. One is it's um, it's a very likely outcome, but it's certainly not impossible that they could go under like any company could go under. The most important thing to know is that your supply of electricity would not be affected. You would continue to get electricity just like you do now. And the reason for that is that First Point's job is to put electricity into the grid on your behalf, but there's a separate nonprofit entity that manages the grid and makes sure that there's always enough electricity to serve customers. What would happen if First Point Power didn't fulfill its obligations and didn't put in the electricity it's supposed to, they would be subject to penalties, financial penalties on them, but those wouldn't flow through to customers. In the worst possible case, <clears throat> if it went all the way to the point where First Point Power actually went bankrupt, the most likely thing, and what happened the one time this did happen in the past, is that another supplier came in, one of First Point's competitors, purchase the contracts and continue to serve the program at the same price as before. So again, customers wouldn't, weren't affected. And then the worst possible thing never happened, but not, you know, anything's possible. If first point were to go out of business and no one else were to pick up the contract, what would happen is one, your electricity would continue to flow, but for pricing, everybody would go back to basic service where you are now. So that's the worst possible result is you'd end up in the same place you are before the program started. What I always like to tell people is these programs aren't about whether or not electricity flows, because as Paul said, the grid operator is required is uh, responsible for that. These programs are just about what do you pay for it? So you could pay this price, you could pay the basic service price, you could pay a price that you chose yourself. These are just pricing changes, but the electricity itself and whether it flows or not, totally not connected to its program. 
Okay. And the third question, if I try this, is it easy to go back to the default of national grid as my supplier if I want? Yeah, absolutely. You can opt out anytime. You just do it using the form or call the phone, or if you got a notice of automatic enrollment, that, that reply card that came with it. I'm dismayed to see solar panels on wild land, meadows, or trees cut for them. How is this related to Valley Green? Um, it is not. This program is not about building solar projects. Um, it is buying from solar projects, but it is not about um, building a solar, a specific solar project. What were you saying about budget billing and Eversource? You mentioned a condition in which you wouldn't want to go into Valley Green Energy. Yes, so if you have Eversource's budget billing, so this does not apply if you're a Northampton National Grid customer. If you have Eversource's budget billing, which is a specific program they have where your bill is exactly the same every month, because they estimate it over time. If you have that you and you participate in Valley Green Energy, budget billing will no longer apply to the supply charge part of your bill. It will continue to apply to the delivery charge part of your bill. So your delivery charge will be, continue to be the same every month, but your supply charge would be calculated based on how much you, electricity you use by multiplying price times use. So that part of your bill would vary. So if it's important to you to have your whole bill be exactly the same every month in budget billing as an Eversource customer, you don't want to participate in Valley Green Energy. I have a distributed solar charge charge on my monthly bill. Will this no longer be relevant when I have Valley Green Energy? Distributed solar, that's... Um... Paul, this is just, just, that's not net metering credits. That's something different, right? Or no, that is. Exactly. It's part of the distribution charge. It's what pays right. for state's yeah. programs, a smart program, things like that. Yeah. So that's not going to change. That's that's part of your delivery charges. And this program has no impact on the delivery charges. We live in a part of Pelham that receives electricity from National Grid. Are we eligible? I'm not aware of a part of Pelham that receives electricity from National Grid. Yes, so this is was news to me too. So we'll track that down. The mm. answer is you sh you would be eligible and the program would apply to you. It could be you didn't get the automatic enrollment notice mm -hmm. though because we weren't aware that there were Pelham customers that were National Grid customers. So we'll we'll track that down and find a way to make the program available to you going forward, but you wouldn't have been part of the automatic enrollment group. But you should be able to enroll. So if you're, I mean, big picture, if you are a metered electricity account in the geographic boundaries of Pelham, it doesn't matter who your utility is, you should be allowed to participate in this program. So if, as we're sorting out the, the details of it, you should still be able to submit an enrollment request through the website or by calling customer support. Yeah, and I, again, that number is 844-202-6033. Also, you can reach out to support at valleygreenenergy.org. Either way, you should find um, some support. And next question, let's see. Um, I read that service can be spotty and not as reliable based on ability to store energy, et cetera. Please share your thoughts on the down, downside. Thank you. So, well, if, if this question is coming from the concern that because Valley Green Energy is buying more from renewable sources, it means the electricity will be less reliable, if that's kind of the fundamental concern behind that question, that is not um, something to be concerned about. As Paul mentioned, the grid operator is responsible for making sure there's a steady, making sure there's a steady and even flow of electricity on the grid. The grid is already a combination of electricity from multiple different sources, including both renewable and traditional fossil fuel sources that all get commingled on the grid. And the grid operator is responsible for making sure that's all flowing smoothly and there's no ups and downs. Through this program, you're not directing electrons from like a solar panel or a wind turbine to your house. We can't do that. You're getting electricity from the grid, but your money's going to go 
toward a renewable energy developer instead of in the fossil fuel direction. You can think about it that way. That's who's going to be putting electricity onto the grid for you, but it's all going to get commingled together and the grid operator is going to grid operator is going to make sure it's all an even flow and your utility is going to deliver it to you in an even way. Uh, next question. I think I opted to get the 100% green electricity, but it was not totally clear to me if I did it correctly. When will it start? And I'm going to add a second part to that. Will it show up on my bill? So the program starts in November and you'll see the price on your bill in December. After the first billing cycle, you see everything on your bill after you complete a billing cycle. So you go in with your November meter read, then you have a billing cycle and then you see it on the next bill. And Marlena, will it identify Valley Green Energy standard, basic, or? No, unfortunately, the utility bills don't have a place for that. So the price will be the thing that tells you which program option you're enrolled in. So you'll just, if you'll remember when I had the slide up that had the bill examples, you know, the, I had on those bill examples, it has the three little prices. And if you go on the website, the, the some, same bill examples are on the website too. You can look at them there. So the price that's used to calculate your supply charge will match the Valley Green Energy prices and you can see which one you're being charged. And Marlene, would, this, could, this person could just call the 800 number two and ask and have someone confirm for them which product they were on? Yep. How does Valley Green Energy make its money? Well, Valley Green Energy is just a program. <laughs> so it's not it's not an entity. Um, so it's, it's not a company, I guess, would be the question, it sounds like. Is there a limit to how many people can sign up for 100% renewable energy? For example, at some point, will it mean more trees will be cut down to make room for more solar farms? Um, well, as far as I know, there's no limit. I don't, Paul, do you have any thoughts about trees being cut down for solar farms? Yeah, so, well, this is a really good question. And, and a similar question came up before, you know, sort of the con Concern that you know for the these some of these solar projects that are in fields where trees are being cut down or using previously undeveloped land that there's a negative to that. I don't think that the the program would be big enough to it's really not tied to a particular project like that and probably wouldn't be big enough to put another one um, over the top. But one thing that's really interesting about the Valley Green Energy Program and is different from all of the other programs like this in the state is that what Valley Green plans to do um, once we get it up and running is to look towards offering a project that's a product that's from local renewables. And in that one, the Valley Green will be making decisions about which specific sorts of projects to support. And so we'll be able to consider factors like this and see the trade-off between putting renewables in a big field with the, with the negatives of that versus maybe on rooftops or other things. So I think in so when this program, once we get it up and going, and then it gets to start to think about supporting particular projects, this is the time that Valley Green Energy can be making those decisions and supporting the sorts of projects that are most beneficial. Um, I'm gonna throw my own question in there to follow up on that, Paul, because that was a good point to bring up. Um, do we have an estimate of roughly how long it might be before we get to provide a fourth option like that? Um, that's a great question. I don't have an answer for that only because we're we're just so focused in getting the program up and launched now. And we we will we'll take up that question just after we get through this first period and then try to plan out how long that will take. Okay, great, thank you. My question about third party suppliers was supposed to be only sent to me, sorry about that. <laughs> um, yes, I understand and um, that's okay because I think that's um, a relevant question for the communities as well. So no worries, Tom. Um, how does Valley Green Energy make their money from this project? Uh, I think you already answered that question, but I wonder if people are wondering about mass power choice. They're saying Valley Green Energy, but I think maybe they mean mass power choice. So how are you all as our consultants making your money from this project? Yeah. Paul, do you wanna take that? Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we're paid what's called the broker fee for the project. So we get a small little amount, one tenth of one cent for each kilowatt hour of electricity sold through the program. And that covers our costs for things like providing customer support and helping the town with the regulatory, the towns uh, with, with the regulatory process and other things. So, but our cost, importantly, is already baked into the price. It's part of the cost of operating the program. 
you know, in the same way that if you're on basic service, the national grid's costs of operating basic service are baked into that price. Or if you have a contract with a third party supplier, their costs or the, the equivalent of our costs is baked into that price too. There's no extra charge associated with it. And the towns don't pay us anything for this work. I should add that we we still haven't been paid. We haven't, we've been working on it for a long time now. We still haven't been paid. Yeah, we only get paid once electricity starts flowing. Um, can Valley Green Energy withdraw before the contract ends if they think it's not making profit? Um, individuals can leave the program at any time. So if everybody wanted to opt out, that would be totally fine. The towns are bound to the contract, but each individual participant um, is always free to leave. And that means everybody could leave potentially. Is National Grid still responsible for electric lines to a resident's house? Yes, National Grid owns the poles and the wires in Northampton and it sounds like parts of Pelham. Um, I, I know that you've answered this, but I think we need to still continue. So will the solar energy sold through this come from those former fields and woods? So, yeah, so that's a good question. I'm, I'm glad this keeps coming up because I, I do think it's really an important concern. So currently the program doesn't have a rule on this. It has a rule on um, how much of the electricity needs to come from renewable sources like solar and wind. It has requirements on exactly what sources of renewables are eligible, but doesn't yet have any requirements on the, like the specific projects or the specific location of the of the renewable projects. But I, I think we should, given that this has come up a bunch and it's a concern for folks, I think it's something we should dig into more and see if we can put together a rule where, for example, the additional renewable energy would come from wind, for example, rather than from these solar farms. So we'll have to take this as an issue to, to work on more. And maybe it's also helpful to know that in, in general, the renewable energy that's available for purchase for voluntary purchase for programs like this is typically wind. Um, so for the communities that we've we've been working with, when we look at where that's coming from, it, it's typically uh, wind projects, not solar. Uh, Marlena, the next few comments are kudos to you. And I absolutely wanna acknowledge that. Um, thank you very much. Yes, you are very clear and do an excellent job with your presentation. So thank you. So I will move on to questions. I am an Eversource customer and currently buy my electricity from an independent supplier. Am I eligible to join Valley Green Energy? Yes, if you are living in the geographic boundaries of one of these three communities, yes. You're just not eligible for automatic enrollment. You just have to take a step to enroll. And that means calling customer support or going online and using the form there. Um, you just want to make sure you know what the terms of your current contract are and whether you'll be charged an early termination fee. Um, if it makes sense to wait and finish your contract, either because you have a great price or you're going to get hit with an early termination fee if you break it, then wait and join in the last billing cycle of the contract. You'll still be able to get the program price. So that would be... Um... So that would be um, at the six months from from the beginning of the program would be the last month of the billing cycle at this price, at this current price, yes? Well, it, no, it, for her contract. So if she's in a contract right now and that contract has another four months on it, let's say, then you can wait till you're in the last billing cycle of that contract and submit your enrollment request. And you could go from that contract into the program. Okay, I was just thinking about um, the change in the Eversource prices in six months, but we don't know if they're going up or down. So um, my question was really about how any intermediaries there seem to be in getting, how, oh, I'm sorry. My question was really about how any intermediaries there seem to be in getting electricity. And I wonder what funds your work in doing this, just wondering how good work like ours gets its funding. or yours. Maybe it's how good work like yours gets its funding. Yeah. And 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 I would say just on on that. So thank you for the question. And it's really um 
Our work is funded through people choosing to participate in programs like this. That's what pays for us to do the work. And insofar as people choose to opt up to the 100% renewable option, that helps to fund more support for renewable energy. What is the current portfolio percentage of the types of sources for the Valley Green Energy Renewable Source? Well, we don't have a portfolio just yet um, because the renewable energy hasn't been purchased yet. So the suppliers are going to, it's it's a percentage, right? So they got to buy an additional 10% for, for example, for the, the folks who are going to participate in standard. So we don't know what that number is going to be yet because we don't know what the kilowatt hours are yet that are going to be flowing through the program. So the suppliers need to wait until we see electricity flowing. They see how many kilowatt hours there are. They can calculate the 10% and then they can go out and buy it. So um, they will do that reporting to us down the road, but they will have to do reporting on it and we will have information about where the renewable energy has been, has been bought from. Can you switch from the default to the 100% anytime within the two years? Yes, you can change program options anytime. I currently have Inspire as my supplier. If I switch, who lets Inspire know? That's a great question. So technically you don't have to tell Inspire. Um, the act of signing up with a new supplier has the impact of pulling you out of any existing contract. So just behind the scenes, what happens is you enroll with Valley Green Energy. First Point Power is the supplier for Valley Green Energy. They would send a notification to your utility saying, we're taking this customer and the utility will send what's called a drop notification to Inspire. That said, it never hurts to tell your supplier that you don't wanna participate with them anymore. So if you wanna call them and tell them that you're gonna cancel, you can do that, but it's technically not necessary. Really only one action is necessary, which is enrolling with the new supplier. You said you can opt out, but during the two years, can a person opt in and out several times to whose price is lower? So the program is not designed for people to bounce in and out to game the system like that. You can opt out at any time and you can come back. But if you opt out and come back during the same electricity supply contract, you will be eligible for a higher market price. Um, it's very expensive for electricity suppliers when people bounce in and out. And to have the safeguard of being able to charge a higher price reduce the risk for them and allows them to bid a lower price from the start. And just to confirm, will we be clearly notified at the end of the two years of price changes and comparison with Eversource Basic? Um, yep, so the Eversource Basic Service and, and National Grid's Basic Service prices are always gonna be available to you on the valleygreenenergy.org website. That's a regulatory requirement, they're always there. And it's also a requirement that when there's a price change, the communities are required to announce it. So it will be public, yes. Um, that was actually our last question. Um, the final comment is really just another great job, Team Peregrine, uh, and they can't wait for you to get paid. <laughs> we can't, <laughs> they, I don't know if they'll ever get paid enough for all the work that they've done for us. Um, I just want to thank everyone for taking the time to be with us this evening for all of your questions. I do want to also give a shout out to local energy advocates who have been assisting us with the outreach and the community outreach. So if you see a presentation um, from local energy advocates, yes, they are absolutely legitimate. I know some, some people have asked me, um, yes, they absolutely are. Um, they're community members who have done quite a bit to help us along with getting this going. So um, yes, please do attend their sessions as well. I want to thank Paul and Marlena as always. I just, you know, we can't thank you enough. And as they said, they haven't gotten paid yet and they have literally spent a few years with us working on this. So thank you ever so much. Again, the telephone number for customer service is 1-844-202-6033, 844-202-6033. And you can also go to support at valleygreenenergy.org where you can ask your questions for customer support, or you can go to the website, which is simply valleygreenenergy.org. 
Thank you all so much. Please, if you have additional questions, don't hesitate to reach out to customer support. They are very rapid in their response time and very clear and thorough. So thank you all once again, and we look forward to the launch of our program in November. Thanks so much. Have a great night, everybody.